Um, because I put to talk about the girls' day. <laughs> Good thing we don't do video. Hopefully, the Patreons never wants to do video because it's just gonna be like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> We're professionals. Oh, we've done this for a year. I promise. We know what we're doing. <laughs> Welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And we're cousins. Yay! <laughs> this week, we're continuing our 50 Bookish Questions with Bookish Questions Part 2. But first, what tea are we drinking? So we are trying the cookie dough tea from Tea Cellar. Uh, we got this in the October box, I yes. think. Yes. So this has black tea, uh, calendula, and chamomile petals, and natural flavors. And we're a little confused where cookie dough came from because there's not really any chocolate or cocoa in it. No. I, and I feel like it could be sweeter, especially given that yeah, it's cookie, cookie dough. dough. So, I don't know. Maybe we just need to add sugar or honey or something. Mm-hmm, cause definitely. I think it needs something. I just don't know what exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are you reading this week? So uh, I think I might have talked about this before, but I'm still reading um, Elise Kova's series Vortex Chronicles, I think. So I'm on the third book now, Failed Future. I'm almost done. I have like 10% left. And then I'll be moving on to the fourth book. That's finally. awesome, though. That's <laughs> a lot of books to read. They're really good. And they would be really fast if I could like, you know. Dedicate your time to only right, doing that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you reading? Well, I am listening oh, yeah. to Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Weingarten. Mm-hmm. I'm halfway through it. Um, it's it's pretty – it was really captivating in the beginning because they're, you know, um, it's basically about this – Is it like thriller, mystery? It is a YA mystery. Okay. Um, some people have said thriller, but most people said mystery thriller. Um, and basically uh, June's um, ex-best friend um, – You know, people are saying that she committed suicide and June doesn't believe it. And so she's, like, kind of trying to figure out what happened. And so, like, I'm in the middle of that. But there was a big um, twist that just happened. And I'm not sure about it in the book. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of paused it just to be like, oh, like, I'm halfway done in this twist I'm not happy with. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of making me not want to jump back into the book. Right. But it's also 50%. I still have 50% left. So I'm like, okay, something has to be happening that I'm going to be pulled back in. Right. So. Like you need you need more because it, it feels like the book is resolved already or something. Yeah, kind yeah. of. And I'm like, oh, well, now that, you know, she's gotten to this point in the book, June, and she, you know, has made up her mind about certain things and certain people mm-hmm. in her life, what I else? don't really see where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. And I don't really think that her best friend, Delilah, who – um who she's trying to figure out if she committed suicide or was killed. Mm -hmm. I don't really think, I don't know. She's a good person. I Mm -hmm. don't know. I'm not sure. You know, maybe, maybe I'm seeing it wrong because I am seeing it from June's perspective, but she was very like, she did things that were wild and crazy into drugs and drank and June wasn't like that, but they were like so close. Mm -hmm. But then Delilah did stuff that to for june but not letting her know you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like would like test other people in june's life if she didn't trust them Mm -hmm. but not let june know so then june's like why are you acting like this you know so i'm not not sure maybe i'm just (laughs) judging it still because it was 50 percent done but it's taking me some pause so i've been going listening to um some podcasts some dateline (laughs) podcasts oh i'm just addicted that's right so we've both been on a um audiobook kick yes and i let my sub or not subscription what do you call it when you check out a book from the library loan yes <laughs> from um the library run out on akata witch and i had to put it on hold to get it back and i just got it back so i'm starting that or i started that up again today nice yeah um i love akata witch i just love it because it's like akata witch <laughs> I just love that name. It it's is such by, a smart uh, name. Nettie Akorafor. Yes. I just like, <laughs> um, I have a couple loans that are going to expire and it's making me stress out. One is um, Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver and the other one is Consumed by J.R. Warden. It tells you now how many people are waiting in line for them. <gasps> no. Which stresses me out. I'm like, okay. Okay. Because you can return it early if you're done. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to return it early, but then I also have to listen to it in five days. <laughs> right. I need to stop listening to Dateline. Dateline needs to block me for a little bit. <laughs> how do I block myself from Dateline podcast? 
<laughs> it's just so addicting. It's so addicting. I think other places should do it. Can right. you imagine just like listening to like a game show? Yeah. You, some things you really think about. Do you really need the visual? Right. I just well, and I love it. Do you know? Okay. And I think it also help. You also are. They're getting another whole generation in that would never have watched Dateline. Well, and they're such good storytellers, too. Because yeah. have you noticed, like, the ones that are, um, I don't know, hosted by or narrated by people that aren't, like, Lester Holt and what I other guy, Holt. I can't think of his name. And, like, the the core people, if it's someone else, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I don't like this one so Me much. too. I feel so bad. Same. But I'm like, it's not the voice that I'm used to. Because we, we go there for those voices, too. Right, because there's three guys. It's Lester Holt. Um, the guy who did something about Pam yes. and then there's another, another guy, guy yeah and if it's not one of them I skip it yeah I, well, I, I, I just can't get into the story mm-hmm. like, same and I really think that like other people should do it like um, Unsolved Mystery should do it mm-hmm. I think that um, 60 Minutes should do it or um, 48 Hours yeah. I just think all those places are really missing out on a, sm- a younger demographic um, oh what's that one that's on Netflix now? You can watch all of Forensic Files. <gasps> Forensic Files. Or Forensic like Files. anything on um, the ID channel. Mm-hmm. Like they all should really get into this because they're putting ads on them. I mean, it's really smart. Right. And yeah. I'm addicted. Uh-huh. <laughs> so please hire me. I'll do it. Because <laughs> really, they're just taking the audio from that episode. Yes. Except for one comment I'm going to have to have. Dateline got better at it. But make sure the audio is all the same. Like all their, either their um, ads were like really loud or like really quiet. And I'm like, okay, come on. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna fix this, <laughs> please. Fix this. <laughs> All right. So, what are some new releases for this for around this time? Yeah. So it sounds like I mean, this is actually kind of a big release week. Yeah. There's a lot of you know things wrapping up and mm-hmm. new things starting. Um. So, Supernova by Marissa Meyer came out. Yes, that's um, a big release. I got a huge email about it. It was crazy. It's number three. It's the very last one in the series. Have you read them? I know you own I, them. No. Yeah, I have them. I haven't read them. They're on my list. <laughs> Same. I it's think on, I own the first one. It's but the it, Renegade series. But weren't we like kind of waiting for them all to come out too? Yeah, because we're those. What I do. Same. Um, because we met Marissa Meyer. Yes, she's so cute. And she had us do the little quiz to find out our uh, what oh, our yeah. name would be. I forgot and about that. Yeah. That was so crazy. So we got quizzed by Marissa Meyer. <laughs> right. I didn't even like think in the moment. I'm just like, yeah, de- going with the yeah. flow. Well, but then I think she approached us. She did. They were kind of. Um, her, it was like her and her. Mm-hmm. editor i yeah. think yeah and i think a lot of them of, their editors i think they were kind of standing by themselves at that point and <laughs> we probably were too <laughs> yeah so i don't know it's always nice to meet people like that and find out they're the same as you yeah. you know same amount of shy mm-hmm. at this like strange event in this dark bar <laughs> right <laughs> like, we're all like oh what do we do <laughs> but anyway so that book is out and now we can read all yes three. i'm so excited um, I saw that The Tyrant Tomb by Rick Rorden is Ooh. coming out. I can't remember the date. I usually write them down next to it. Well, is this a new series? Um, so this is The Trials of Apollo. This is the oh, fourth okay. one. So Apollo has been turned into a human and banished from Olympus. And that's really all I can say if you haven't read the books. I have right. read them. I don't have this one yet. Which See, I used to, be, I used to keep track of them. Mm-hmm. But Apollo's kind of um in the first, in the first couple books. I can't say. He could have a... Um, uh, character arc that changes, but he was kind of like um, cocky yeah. and like full of himself because he's Apollo. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really mesh as well with the character, but it's Rick Rorden, so I'm gonna read it because it's yeah. gonna have like all of the fantasy, all of the. It's gonna have Camp Jupiter. It's gonna have demi demigod. So I loved it. Aww. yeah. Um, and then I also saw that the Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. Oh, I didn't say when that came out, did I? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Good talk, Samantha. Good talk. I didn't say about uh, Supernova either. Oh, okay. It came um, out. Sorry. Supernova came out November 5th. Okay. Uh, today. Oh, yeah. November 5th. And then um, Rick, the tri- Tyrant, the Tyrant's Tomb comes out the 6th. And okay. then The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. That comes out. Oh, it already came out. Why did I think it just came out? Oh, no, it did not. Oh, my gosh. It comes out the 14th. That's I'm okay. the UK one, though. Oh, Hold when's on. the American one? Um, yeah. Maybe it already came out, and then this is just the UK 9th. one. Yeah. Must okay, be I was very confused because I already have this book, so I was like, maybe. Well, that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, I swear I saw this earlier. Yeah. In the year. So, but, there you go. If you're from the UK, it yeah. comes out today. Good. Yeah. Yay. All right. Do you have any more? Um. Yes. Sisters of Shadow and Light by Ooh. Sarah B. Larson. She is the same author 
um, as she also wrote Dark Breaks the Dawn mm-hmm. and then Bright Burns the Night. Um, so then this is her new series and it's another YA fantasy. Um, Very big on fa- YA fantasies this month. Or this, oh, this, you know. this is my life. I know, same. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. All the books. All the books. So my Kindle Unlimited recommendation, I saw this um, a little while ago and I really liked it's um really like the premise of it. Uh, it is a YA romance, and it's basically about a girl who survives a plane crash, and she's in an Irish hospital. She doesn't remember anything. She has the amnesia. Doesn't remember anything about herself. So all of a sudden, she's a girl who her dad's coming from America to take her home, and she kind of just sneaks out of the hospital and becomes and gets a new identity, and is yeah. hiding out in this small town in Ireland, and. She's like, kind of like, go like doesn't tell anybody who she is and kind of like keeps up this lie, but then she has to kind of like realize is she gonna keep up with this lie and not ever remember who she is, or you know what if she remembers who she is, you know? So it's just mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it was a really interesting premise. Yeah, it the, sounds really good. Yeah, the upside of falling down by Rebecca Crane. Oh, it sounds so good. It yes. sounds like it's right up my alley. I know, right? Um, and I think it's uh, if you don't have Kindle Limited, it's on sale for a dollar ninety nine right now on Amazon. Dang. Yeah. Um, okay, so for prime reading, yes, we were just talking about Rick Riordan. Yes. And I found. Oh my god, how do you say it? Riordan. Oh, That's I how I say. It. I don't. I know. say it probably wrong. We're I gonna have to look this up. <laughs> we need to start looking this up. Continue. Um, the Lost Hero, the Heroes of Olympus, book one, is on prime <gasps> reading right now. What? Yeah. That's so cool, right? Isn't that so exciting? That's awesome that you can start that. Yeah. And this is the um, next series that your son needs to yes, read. Yes. And I'm pretty sure if you, I think this is the one on Amazon right now, The, the it's five books in that series. Yes. The paperback box set uh-huh. is only like $25 right now. Oh, that's so such a good deal. Christmas gift. Yes. Christmas gift. I love box sets. If you ever want, I just feel like box yeah, sets are that's amazing. What he's getting for Christmas. <laughs> The so Weston, don't listen. To I was gonna say, don't listen. <laughs> oh my gosh, if they could find, that'd be hilarious if they tried to like oh found us and listen. Oh, um, so <laughs> for my bookish updates, um, I'm back on Instagram posting Yay! again. Got inspired. I just got out um, my new camera. Was taking shots. Of oh, you're using your camera. My camera, camera. Oh, camera. My goodness. So I take pictures and I edit them because I just feel like I. That's how I do everything else. It's mm-hmm. hard for me to do it on my phone because. That's not my process. Yeah. So I've learned that. So now I just take them with my camera and then I edit them on a computer and then I just send them to my um, iPad and mm-hmm. doodle them if I want. And then I just send them to my phone. So it's a lot of steps. Yeah. I don't know why I have to make things complicated, but I do. <laughs> so I'm back on there and I got some cute pictures I've been posting. I need to probably get better schedule right now. I just post them whenever I'm feeling yeah, the inspiration. And then I did a couple blog posts. I have my... October. You were on top of it. I For my blog, I don't know. I've been really blogging. But other than that, it's, uh, nothing else. Not really reading a lot. <laughs> um, I did the October Net Galley book haul, which is all the books that I got accepted in October. I which, love that. Which is a lot. I feel like you need to do that because you get a lot too. Oh but my you God, I have a problem. Um, <laughs> and then I got, and then I did my November um, books for Book of the Month Club, kind of mm-hmm. showing what books are this month and which ones I picked. And then I did my book review of 10 by Gretchen McNeil. and. Dang. My book reviews consist of uh, quotes and um, items you need while reading and some notes because I, when I'm reading books, I usually make a couple notes either in my phone or on a piece of paper. And so I like just put those sometimes if yeah. they're like funny. I, like, I love that um, things you need while you're reading. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I don't even know where I came up with that, but I think it was because I was reading um, – a sad one and I just kept thinking about my mom so I was like you need to have a picture of your mom with you oh, and, stuff. and tissues and <laughs> tissues and so that's where it came from oh I love that yeah what have you been up to uh so nothing reading, I originally wrote here turn. I'm boring and dumb <laughs> <laughs> and I was like erase that there are some things you've been doing um no so I I'm I've been terrible with blogging She's I did been like a, up for a ton but you've been doing a lot of reading though yeah I have um, so I did a blog tour with Penguin Team. Mm-hmm, that was um, cool. And it was for Wicked Reads. 
uh, they did this whole campaign where they sent out a thing to bloggers, and it was you had different candies you got to pick from. Oh, yeah. And then whatever candy you picked, they had a book assigned to that. But you didn't get to find that out until you got it in the mail. Yeah, which I think is so cool. So I got uh, The Haunted by Danielle Vega, and then um, I signed up to do a mood board. And I've never done a mood board before. So I got to learn how to do that. Yeah, I so don't know like, why so I said I would do it, but I did. <laughs> I really think it's cool that you did something new. So explain to us what a mood board is and how you did it. So, I mean, it's, I don't know. I feel like it's so hard to explain, but it's just kind of um, like a collage of pictures that represent the book in some way that kind mm-hmm. of like evoke the same feelings as the book. Okay. So um, there's a lot of authors I follow that I really like how they like, if you follow them on Pinterest, they have Pinterest boards that are kind of like mood boards for their books. Oh, I've never done that. Um, Martina does that. Yeah. Uh, McAtee. McAtee. Yes. <laughs> it's like, how do We're I say saying it? it? We're saying it right finally after 50 episodes. <laughs> um, so I, I'm pretty sure she does it for her books. And oh, then that's me. the author of Grey Wolf Island. Oh, yes. She d- she's doing one for her new book. <sighs> Oh, yeah. that's so cool. And so a mood board is kind of like when you were a kid, and you just cut out things from a magazine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, kind of like a collage. Yeah. So, oh, cool. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, how am I going to do this? Because, you know, you can't just steal people's pictures. You have to use, like, those free pictures, whatever that's called, where um, they're free copyright. Yeah. Whatever. Stock. Um, stock images. St- that's what it is. So <laughs> there's a few different mm-hmm. websites you can use. Um, I think I ended up using... Uh, Adobe, I can't think what it's Stock called. Stock photos? No, hold on. I, I had to download the app. It's called Spark Post, hmm, okay. but it's by Adobe. Mm-hmm. And so they have a ton of those pictures on there, and they have a different, different like collage um, things that you can do. But then Canva also offers it. Ooh. And a lot of the stock photos are the same, but a lot of the ones on Canva. The pictures that you have to pay for are pictures that are free on Spark Post. Oh. So... I don't know. There's a couple different ways you can do it, yeah. but I finally got it, and I don't know. I thought it was I really like fun. I like it. It's really cool. And I was just – I was really impressed with myself for finding pictures yeah. that actually – because if you read the book there, like, in my mood board, I have a creepy doll, and there's a creepy doll in the book. Oh, And I there's, like, like a thing with a cat, and, like, the house is under a lot of construction, and so there's all these, like, plastic – sheets oh. and so she keeps thinking that there's people behind them so i found a picture that kind of evokes yeah that it does i had a lot of fun actually creating this that is really cool do you i think that maybe next time you should maybe like explain like a little bit about it yeah because yeah. i really liked I before you, before you before you explain that i was like oh this is really creepy but when you say why you pick those mm-hmm. it makes it more creepy that's a good idea opinion. well and i thought about doing this for like a lot of my book reviews yeah like, just this is kind of cool doing a, it's fun well and i feel like it's a very creative outlet yeah you know what yeah I mean? well it's I fun i really like it you have to search through i all might try pictures, to do one <laughs> you know yeah. so you have to like type in these keywords yeah. and then find the right photo because there's a yeah. lot of creepy doll pictures but i think that one goes with this book so much better than some of the other like really yeah. weird ones yeah no i really like this that's really cool i hope you do more yeah, it was fun. It was also, fun. I want to congratulate you on 100 reviews on NetGalley. I don't know if we told everybody. You got oh. 100 reviews on NetGalley. That's insane. I did. I do not have that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that because it right? just um, it just updates automatically on your yeah, blog, doesn't it? Yeah, the little badge or whatever. Yeah. Because I didn't know either until I went to my blog and saw it on the <laughs> side. Like, and I was like, oh, oh that's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> See, I feel like you're really good at like reading a ton. And I have to I read and then I review. And then I go through a hangover. And then I read and then I review and I go through a hangover. <laughs> See, what I usually do is read because I'm like, oh, I have to read the book by this date. Yes. So I read it by that date. And then you do your and then blog I post don't or do Instagram or whatever. And then you forget the review. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we should read. <laughs> I feel like we need to combine both of those strengths and super and work, human. Yes, yeah, super human. <laughs> work together because, oh, my gosh. Uh, book world news. We have a ton. Mm. Thanks mostly to you. I have one thing. Um, thanks to past Elizabeth because yes. I don't remember what a lot of these are. So. <laughs> oh, yay, surprises. <laughs> We're going to find out together. Um, the first thing you already knew about, of course you did, but I thought I was going to surprise you. Um, I knew, but I didn't know. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in love with the Adagio mugs. You've posted a bunch on your bookstagram. Yeah, the double walled, like. Infuser mug. In- yeah, it comes wall. with a little infuser. And yeah. they used to just have uh, seasonal ones. Yeah, so they'd have a grass one, a petals one, a leaves one, and um, 
lights. Lights one, the Christmas mm-hmm. lights. So now they have a ton more. It's mm-hmm. so exciting. They come out. They're available starting December 1st. So I've already put so some on my wish list. Perfect Christmas gifts. Perfect. Um, the 12 ounces. And then like there's some with like lips on it. Uh, uh, dog one, Voyage one, Sunflower, Seaside, Reindeer, um, Poppy, which is little poppy flowers, mm-hmm. Orbit, which is space, Meow. There's a ton. Yeah. And I've already got some on my wish list, so I'm ready for them to come out for and myself. Merry Christmas to myself. Mm-hmm. Which one is our favorite? The Skulls. <laughs> I love that one so That's much. the first one I was like, what is this? <laughs> right. And it, so how I stumbled upon this is because I had the one, um, the Christmas oh, one. The bees one is. Isn't oh, the bees yeah. one so cute? Okay, um, I had the... Christmas light bulb one on my wish list. I was like, oh, I have to remove this one. I bought it. Mm-hmm. And I clicked on it, and that's how I found the skulls. And I like the reindeer one for great meats. <laughs> and the, the little forest critters. Yes, I have so the forest cute. critters, too. I can't say who I'm going to get that for for Christmas. Forest critters? Yeah. Jackie. Uh, that's who I thought. But, it, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Jackie, if you listen to this, be surprised. I didn't know if you meant bees because there's another no, person. Yeah. I was actually going to get bees for <laughs> okay. I can say that. Brittany doesn't listen. Hey, Brittany, I'm getting you this bees thing. <laughs> Well, she listens, but it's it, she takes like months. So. Right. So Jackie's behind. She just went to, oh, this is really side. Uh, Jackie oh, sorry. Um, I just kicked you. <laughs> uh, went to Washington D.C. to discuss health care with um, the representatives of Iowa. Oh my gosh, isn't that that's insane? Awesome. She, and I just yeah, it was really cool. I'm really proud of her because that's a lot for yeah. her, you know, introverted person to do. And then to be like, I don't, she had to be very personal it. about like, this is affecting my life and this affects my friends that have also have, um, you know, like serious health issues mm-hmm. and it's really crazy. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's a little side note. Okay. All right. <laughs> What's next? Uh, should we do Goodreads? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what is it called? Um, I've Good never reads Choice Awards. Yes, I've never voted in this. Have you? What? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm a loser. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, best books of 2019. Um, so they're all up. Um, yes, they have like a thousand categories mm-hmm. that you can vote in. It's fiction, not <laughs> fiction, mystery and thriller, historical fiction, fantasy, romance, science fiction, horror, humor, nonfiction, memoir and autobiography. Um, I lost my space. <laughs> History and biography, um, science and technology, food and cookbooks, graphic novels and comics, ooh, ooh. poetry, debut novel, and then young adult fiction, young adult adult fantasy and science fiction, middle grade and children, and picture books. I'm very upset that there's not more YA. I know. That is my one little it complaint kind of right now. Because what if it doesn't fall in? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like you're just... Well, there's so many books that could fit into those categories. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not giving, like why do we're missing out on a lot of books? Why do the adult get so many and only why it gets two? Well, and then middle grade too. Yeah, they middle get grade gets one. one category. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and we were discussing like it's really exciting, but I feel like a lot of the books that came out at the beginning of the year kind of getting mm-hmm. forgotten. Because a lot of the ones that are on this list are books that. Literally, just literally came just out. came out. We were like, okay, this just came out. Like it's exciting, and I'm so happy for those authors. But what about some of the books that came out in January? Exactly. Are they forgotten? Mm-hmm. You know? And then, but what is nice is you can enter a title of a book published in 2019 and vote for it. And I think mm-hmm. if enough people do that, then it gets pushed to the front. But, right. yeah, I'm going to vote and I'm excited. But, I, you know, I, if they were, you know, if we could, I wish there was, like, a place where you could be like, okay, but there needs to be more YA in middle grade because there's so much more out there. Yeah, we need more categories. Yeah. Don't forget all of us, all right? But I'm excited. <laughs> and I'm going to vote this year. There's so many good, like, I don't even know how I'm going to pick on some of these because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I always feel like I'm really behind on reading, but then I look at these and I'm like, okay, well, I've read a couple out of each category yeah. or something, so I, I can at least cast a vote, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. All right. What's next? Okay. Let's find out. Because... Yay. We're diving into the mystery links. <laughs> So this one I have titled, Netflix Wants to Do All the Adaptations. I mean, I'm not <laughs> mad about it, if that's true. Oh. Oh, mine's taking. Yep, it says, you will be redirected back to your article in five seconds. Skip it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so it says, Netflix, it's, this is an article in Deadline.com. Netflix heads to the world's biggest book fair as it woos publishers for literary buying spree. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Do you think it's kind of in the wake of Disney Plus coming? Oh, shoot. Are you going to sign up for Disney Plus? No. I don't think so. I will either. 
don't know what that <laughs> sentence was. But I don't know. Like, I was just thinking, like, what what are they going to have that I'm going to be missing out on, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Netflix I mean, has the office. Oh, my God. I saw something on Reddit that said, um, <laughs> um, I'm paying however much Netflix is just to basically um, – own an office subscription. <laughs> right. Like, True. Um, so I read where um, the representative for Netflix said, uh, where we go on a different path is that when we option, we option with an eye toward making it and not just so it sits in option. We love to make great stories. Oh, I love it. Right. Because so many books you find out they get optioned and then the movie never gets made mm-hmm. or TV show or whatever. It, just it never bounces happens. around and mm-hmm. yeah. I love so that. So I think that's so exciting. Well, they did a really good job with um, – uh, Which one? I know. <laughs> so many, right? I'm trying to think of To them. All the Boys? Yes, yeah, To yeah. All the Boys. Which, what's, what are more? I can't think of them. Mm, well, they're coming out with uh, Let It Snow. Yes. Comes out this um, Friday, I believe. Daughter of Smoke and Bone or that series, right? Uh, by Lee Bardugo? Nope. Nope. By Lainey Taylor? Nope. Well, okay, <laughs> Lee Bardugo's, Bardugo's yes. series. Sorry, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, Grisha, yes. But then look at um, Hulu did great with I've heard so far with uh, Looking for Alaska. Oh yeah. So I'm so happy that other places are mm-hmm. understanding that books are amazing as yeah. movies. And as it's long, so nice. And I really like that Netflix lets the authors as as, long as much as we know right be involved, which makes I feel like makes the movie even better yeah because why would you not want to listen to the person who understands the fandom and mm-hmm. who wrote it who will understand what the people they want. have this vision in their heads and they can help you make it come to life you know and they have the vision and they put it in a book so we all have that vision too mm-hmm. like that's why when i watched um to all the boys i love before like i was like this is exactly what was in my brain yes. this is insane it's and why wouldn't Spot you want to work with it? Because I'll just get you more money because it'll be more popular. Right. Yeah. yeah but I'm, that's so exciting. So where are they going? They said, you said, biggest book fair. Do you know where um, they're going? Or do Frankfurt you even say? Frankfurt Book Fair. Hmm. So that's Germany? Is that a big, yeah, Frankfurt. Must be. Must be. Cool. Anyways, I, yeah, pass me linked to this. So I must have thought it was important. <laughs> it's really interesting. I can't wait it to is. see what they do and who they go for. Yeah, I'm curious to see what else um, they're going to be coming out with. Yes. Um, okay. So I saw what you linked next. <laughs> Are you there yet? 2020 YA books to movies. Yes. So I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast, but we are actually looking into doing this as like a mini series. Yeah. Of what reading the book, watching the movie, and comparing. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually posted about it um, on my bookstagram just because I wanted to just put yeah. it out there. A lot of, we, I got feedback, and everyone said that's such a oh, good, good idea. And they really want to hear our opinions on it. So Yay. I was like, we're definitely going to have to start doing that Yeah, with our ample amount of time. I mean, Elizabeth, we just sat around all day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is um, the first book on this list, isn't that the book you posted about on Instagram? All the Bright Places? It wasn't. It was actually everything, everything. Ah, but, darn it. Okay. But I can't freaking wait. I've already – did you see – Um, d- didn't they p- pick the cast for all the bright place- places? Yes. Finch is so adorable. Oh, my God. I'm so, so excited. excited. Mm-hmm. I'm just so excited. Mm-hmm. I they, That's one of those books that I still remember everything. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how some books you don't – you read and you don't – you can't really remember, like – Yeah. No, I, I don't know why, but I remember everything. Probably because it was so impactful yeah, and, and, and traumatizing. traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. not to be extra, but traumatizing. It was traumatizing. I'm so excited for that. Okay, next one is Artemis Fowl. Watch that trailer. And I've never read the book, but it makes me want to read it. And I think yeah. the boys would really like it too. It sounds so good. Yeah. Um, Chemical Hearts. I'm pretty sure that book was coming out when we went to our first book con because I think we got a little chapter sampler for that book. You're right. I was going to say, it sounds familiar. Um, Chaos Walking. I don't know if I've. Where the heck is that? It's above Chemical Hearts, right? Oh, below the I picture. skipped it. My no, bad. That's okay. I just... Oh. So, it's based on the book, The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. <gasps> oh, okay. So, they like, changed... I've never heard... I've never heard of that book before. Which sometimes they do, which is fine, I but... think Chaos Walking might be the name of the series. Oh, okay. Which makes sense. Uh, Dear Zoe? Or Dear Zoe? Zoe? Yeah. Zoe? Zoe? Um... So the oh, book is gosh. an epistolary novel, so it's a book written in letters. Oh, interesting. So it says um, uh, about a 15-year-old girl who, after the death of her sister Zoe, writes her letters to work through her grief. 
That All right. Be... That's going to be a very, very, it's like P.S. I love you. It's going to be a tearjerker. Have you seen yeah. that movie? Yes. You cry the entire time. What's... What is the point of this? Right. What's crazy is like, Alex is not a crier and he cried through that whole movie, but he also cried at um, Me Before You. I bawled at me before you. Are you kidding me? I bawled for the book, but I knew it was coming in the movie, and I just cried a little bit. And he, like, after the movie, bless his heart. You didn't tell him what was going to happen. You broke his heart. (laughs) Um, Did he? You guys haven't seen? Okay, then you have to when you when we get to um, the Fault in Our Stars Mm -hmm. when we read the book. No, you need to make him watch the movie with. I'll watch it by myself. That's one you need because I cried. So hard at that movie. I could barely uh, see it because I'm bawling so no. bad. The actor, the actor and actress, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, did such an amazing job. Isn't the girl? Yes, the she's from Divergent. In, yeah. and so, so is he. He's the brother. They're the oh. brother and sister. Their brother and sister in Divergent? In Divergent, and then they're in this one. Oh, I don't like that. But I don't really... <laughs> I, I really like... I'd rather have them in this than in the Divergent series. Okay, we keep getting off track. <laughs> um, Enola Holmes. Okay. So it says... Middle grade and young adult. Okay. Yeah. And then it says the adaptation boasts a star studded cast, including <gasps> Millie Bobby Brown, oh. Henry Cavill, and more. Wonder what it's about. Right? <gasps> Fear Street? Oh. R.L. Stein, Fear Street? <gasps> okay. I've been wanting to pick up the R.L. Stein books again ever <laughs> right? since I realized that that's the only scary book I've ever read. Right. Well, I can say I read 10 now. That yeah, was that's scary. True. That's true. But I should have just kept it. Been like, oh, what scary movies, books have you read? Oh, only the R.L. Stein ones. <laughs> that the is one my with level. The guy on the cover with, with the ski mask. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> Sorry. I want to see. Okay. So the back to the case of the Miss, um, the El Enola Holmes mystery. Mm-hmm. It's the case of the missing Marquis. Marquis, when Eleanor Holmes, sister to the detective Sherlock Holmes, discovers her mother has disappeared, she quickly embarks on a journey to London in search for her. Aww. So that's cool. Okay, yeah. sorry. Oh. Fear Street? What the frick? I'm so excited. These oh, I lost my link. Sorry. These won't be of this films, though. Instead, they'll be he- they'll head to Netflix. <gasps> They're going to yes, be Netflix. Please. That's so exciting. Okay. This can- article must be kind of old. No. 1010. Hmm. Because, um... Let It Snow is on here, and it says no date, but I can tell you the date is this Friday. Yeah. <laughs> um, did, uh, the ki- Sorry, the next one I saw was The Kissing Booth, too. Did you watch the first one? Mm-mm. No, I don't know what the book. book. What book is What is the book called? I think it's called The Kissing, the Kissing Booth. Booth. I think so. How did I not read it? Because it's it just seems like up my alley. And yeah. when I saw the Netflix movie, I was like, oh, that looks really good. I didn't know it was a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And I want to read Let It Snow, but I kind of want to wait until Grace meets. I know. <laughs> Oh, and then next is The Prom, which I don't think I've heard of that either. No, but every time I think of prom, just, okay, it just was Halloween, guys. I think of um, the the scary movie, Prom Night. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> That's Thank where God. my brain goes. Isn't that a real campy one? Yeah, it is. That's why I like it. Okay. <laughs> Star Girl. All right, Star Girl. By Jerry Spinelli. To all, to all the boys, P.S. I love you. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I love their announcement. It was so cute. So I didn't see it yet, but I remember just a few months ago seeing something where um, he said, Peter, whatever the real actor's name is, Peter said he wasn't going to be in the sequel. Yeah, he was trolling people. Okay. (laughs) Because I was like, is this a joke? Because I'm not going to watch it. No, he was trolling people. (laughs) Okay. He did this thing where, like, they called, I think so, I think this was the release, but he, like, called and they were talking as as their characters, and she's like, can I tell them? And he's like, yeah, and then they said they were going to be. Oh, my God. They're they're so so adorable. I just can't help it. He is so cute on Instagram. She's so cute all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. There are so many on this list. What is that? How do you say that next one? Weetsy Bat? Yeah, something. Never heard of that. Mm Mm-mm. And then Words on the Bathroom Wall. Ooh, I like that name. Mm Mm-hmm. Adaptation of the book by Julia Walton. Hmm. This is so exciting because we need to add this to our document. Oh, my God. There's so many books. So (laughs) many books to movies. I love that books are just, like, just kicking butt Mm -hmm. in the movie world, in the... I don't know what net. What would you call Netflix and Hulu? It's like the oh streaming streaming services? yeah streaming services. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just think it's really cool. I'm surprised that Disney hasn't picked up on this, but I just feel like they're so focused on like their properties, right? They're not well, really but looking. 
Disney has books. Disney Hyperion is a yeah. publisher. I'm I'm, I'm wondering if they're not. Maybe they are. Maybe they are going to be doing like the Bells was published yeah. by Disney Hyperion. That would be freaking amazing. That Murder would be cool. trending. Yeah, is Disney Hyperion. Um, really quick about Disney, they're bringing Hocus Pocus two. Did you see that? No. And all the three original witches agreed to be in Hocus Pocus two. What? 2. So that might be the one reason we get Disney Plus. Isn't oh that so my. exciting? But I wonder how what they're going to do. If it's going to be, like, before, like, pre that book, or... How, though? Because they're older now? Huh? The ladies? Oh, I don't know. You know? Well, you know, because they're older until they drink the potion. Oh. Hmm. You know what I mean? I wonder if they're going to have, um, what's her name back? The little girl. I can't think of the actress's <gasps> yes, name. Yes, she's in, um, oh, she's teeny. Yeah. <laughs> and and they have the guy from, you don't watch this, probably NCIS. He's the older brother who's the cat the entire time, the voice. Yeah. So I hope he's oh in it. Oh, my God. Right? And Thackeray. Thackeray. <laughs> Thackeray. Oh, it's going to be so good. Okay, we just got off on yes. a really big tangent again. All right, what's the next one? Okay, so the next one, I found this article, and it's called The Best Young Adult Authors, A Non-Definitive List. And I just thought it was interesting, um, an interesting look, list of people that, I don't know, like some of them, I'm surprised they're on here just because... I don't see as much of their stuff. Yeah. So is it just like the author's opinion of this article? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's why they called it a non-definitive list. Um, Because, yeah, because it's not a real measurable thing. Yeah. But some of these, I'm, yeah. Ooh, hold on. Okay, it's by Emily Martin. It says, with that being said, my criteria for making this list, um, my list of best, auth- best adult authors is as follows. To make this list, the author must have published more than one young adult book. Oh, sorry, I said adult. They must be clearly written for young adult audiences. Um, similarly, Michael Harry Potter series delight both children and adults. Oh, so it basically can't be middle grade, even mm-hmm. though like Harry Potter, you know, is kind of like in middle grade. All right, hmm, interesting. And it's also her opinion, but I'm really excited to read this. Yeah, and she says, you know, let's not focus on who's not here, but who is. Yeah, and so she's got 20 authors listed here. Um, Lauren Oliver's on the oh, list. Hey. Marie Lou, uh, Danielle Clayton, Jenny Han. Yeah, Rainbow, Rainbow Rowell, Rowell. <laughs> Becky Albertalli, Adam Silvera, Lee Bardugo. Like, there's a lot of very well What did well I just known. read about Adam Silvera? Um, he's the one we saw his Halloween costume as we were scrolling Instagram the other day together. But I read something okay. about him and I was like, oh, oh, um, Infinity Sun is coming out and it looked really good. But I was like, oh, yeah, he's a really cute one. That was mm-hmm. so yeah, we saw him at BookCon. Yeah. Because I, like, I think oh, yeah. they were both like too shy to ask him for a picture. Yep. <laughs> you know, he was wandering. walking right he next to us. He was walking right next to us, taking pictures just like we were, and, I, and, you're, and we're both like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're <hungry. laughs> Lee Bardugo, Nicola Yoon. So many authors Nick on this Stone. list. And they all make sense. Nick, yep. Okay, Nick Stone, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. She's really? the most beautiful human being in the I world. Do. And she's always doing, like, Really awesome things with her makeup, like colors that oh. I would be too chicken to do. And she's just so freaking pretty. I love people who can do that. Who she, can do like, colors and do like, and just art. Yes, like yeah. literally the most pretty person in the mm-hmm. world. Oh, I love her. Oh, man, I'm gonna <laughs> so, I'm gonna have to go make sure I follow her. <laughs> um, and then I thought this was another interesting one. Mm-hmm. It's co-written YA books. Ooh. So, you know, um, like... Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman wrote yeah. the Illuminae series, mm-hmm. and now they're writing, what is that oh, book called? Aurora Rising? Yes, Aurora Rising yep. together. So these are other co-written books. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them I that, you know, kind of drew my eye to this list was I'm Not Dying With You Tonight. I actually by, got that on NetGalley. Yeah, and it's really good. It's a really quick read. You read it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm guessing by, we both got it around the same time. I'm just slow. So, <laughs> it's by Kimberly Jones and Gilly Siegel. Cool. Okay, I'm going to have to read that fast then so we can talk about it. But yeah, that was really good. <laughs> and it's in that book, I know maybe not all of them do that, do it this way, but that one was written from the two different perspectives oh, of the two different girls in this situation. Okay. So it was kind of cool. Oh, All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Kelly. Yeah, we actually heard really? them talk about that book yeah. at BookCon. Mm-hmm. Hey, Illuminae, like it, you said. Yep. Um, Tiny Pretty Things by Danielle Clayton and Sonia. Oh, yeah. How do you say that? Charip. Patra? Yeah, we've said it before. I, I can't know. remember. We've like looked it Cleopatra, up. Cleopatra, kind of. I love but it. Not. <laughs> um, Dash and Lily's book of dares, and I'm pretty sure Dash and Lily they also have a Christmas. Oh, okay. Um, like book, whatever. Yeah. 
Um, yes, no, maybe so by Becky Abertelli and Aisha Said. Mm-hmm. Oh, they all just sound so good. They do. I love that people can co-write things. So sometimes people don't work well of, together. You well, know? that terrifies me because, like, who writes what? And, and who makes the decisions? Or do you just kind of, like, have to – there's probably a lot of compromising going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Um, oh, you have oh, an update? I guess. <laughs> you updated the Macmillan versus the library. I and love I, that I have no You're like, good job, Elizabeth. <laughs> like, um, it says major public library system will boycott Macmillan ebooks. Ooh. So the nation's top digital circulating library has said it will stop buying new release Macmillan ebooks once the publisher's two month embargo begins next month. Dang. Which is crazy. And that That's is so crazy. Um, King County Library System. So, we're not a part of that, are we? No, I don't think no. so. We're bridges. My guess is, let's see, it's headquartered in Issaquah, Washington. Okay. So, yeah, let's, I mean, I don't blame them. Yeah, it says, we made a decision just like they did. Right. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't, pump, you, why are you punishing the libraries? I mean, I had no idea how much libraries, like, paid for ebooks mm-hmm. but they're not going anywhere everything is digital like we still love our paperback so yeah. don't get us wrong but just the convenience sometimes mm-hmm. you know you can have you can check out books right there on your tablet right. or your phone well and you know what i almost think you know we've talked about having guests and i kind of talked with this or talked with alex about this and he's always so good at bringing in like the devil's advocate side or you know like the other side of things to kind of point out and i think this might be a good topic to talk to him about cuz he and i discussed it and he's like to be fair on Macmillan's side like they're a business trying to make money yeah you know yeah. and i get that and then so i tried to point out to him like you know how important reading in it is and how important it is that we have books and stuff available for anyone mm-hmm. like the library doesn't cost anything you check it out and especially with ebooks like it's it, you know you don't have to have much it's just right well, there and, the e-book, and another thing is like yeah libraries can have physical books but those physical books can be damaged they can mm-hmm. be stolen this stuff can't be stolen they can't right. can't be damaged and it's so accessible like we need reading to be accessible and mm-hmm. so i had that argument and we just kind of it was just interesting to hear another perspective yeah and, I totally get that they need to make money, but then maybe try to come up with, like, a compromise and Mm -hmm. bring libraries in on it and being like, okay, well, like, let's see, like, you know, maybe we only limit you to so many books you can get from our publishers Mm -hmm. instead of just being like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be really fun to find some topics like that. Um, Not just this, but, like, other topics that maybe are, like, in a gray area and definitely, like, do a debate on, like, people. Like, obviously give people enough time to research it or have some – find someone who has a differing opinion of us. Right. Because I don't mind hearing differing opinions. Right. And that's the thing. Like I said, I think he's really good at playing the devil's advocate where Mm -hmm. he might not even agree with the other side, but he's going to bring it up and he's going to fight it. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of, like, he's got a friend that's like that, too. Yeah. (laughs) It's just interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, yeah, if, if anyone that's listening has other, like, controversial things that they'd like to discuss, like, let us know. World. Yeah, in the book world. <laughs> in the book world. Good call. <laughs> or, like, you know, maybe, like, you know, authors, you know, should, you know, like how some people, I don't know about this Goodreads um, giveaway, mm-hmm. back to that, or not the giveaway, the awards. awards, but, you know, is it, is there a lot of um diversity in it you know right. that kind of stuff so like stuff in the book world that you know maybe needs to be brought up or talked about or oh yeah because there's been a lot of bully things. romances versus non because oh, i got yeah. some things to say about that so there's been a lot of things in the award the book mm-hmm. of world 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 right now that yes. have been kind of controversial so yes. definitely in the romance i haven't really been obviously in it for a while uh-huh. but there's a there's like the last i heard there was still some guy in canada who made the site for all books everywhere. Like, remember, I looked at it, and mm. you could find every Cassandra Clare one, every recorded. And he was just doing it and not getting in trouble. And I was like, how? Right. So, I don't know. I just think that we should maybe – that's a good idea. I like yeah. that. Another tangent, yeah. done. All right, what's this? <laughs> okay, what else do I have on here? Oh, Ninth House. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is being adapted into what? a TV uh, – I can't remember if it's a movie or a show. I so sorry, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, developed as a TV series by Amazon Studios. Like, this book just came out. That's how amazing she is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. And this is her, is this her first adult fiction? 
I believe so. That's what I thought. I just wanted to triple check. I pre-ordered it because, duh, mm-hmm. she's amazing. And I just want to say, like, if you are in awe of her books, she is her books when she's, she's like, in caps, she just mm-hmm. is her books in, in when you meet her. Mm-hmm. She's just so. She she's an, got an aesthetic. She, has an, she also has an aura around her. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. If that makes any sense. Like, right. it's very, like, confident, but not cocky. Yep. It's just a very, like, this is who I, she's very okay with who she is. And mm-hmm. I freaking love it. Yeah, continue. I'm, sorry. I love her. I would say continue when I interrupt you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just love her. Um, That's so see. cool, though. That's so cool. Where did you say it was going to be? Amazon. <gasps> see, Amazon, you, 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 you're killing it. You're killing it. It's mm-hmm. okay that you upped your prices. You're killing I'm it. so freaking excited. I mean, I need to read this book, but this is all the more That's reason, maybe right? one we need to read together because... I've heard it gets really, really dark. I'm excited. <laughs> so, yeah, me too. But, you know, just a forewarning for anyone who's not oh, prepared yeah, for that. Yeah. It's I've not, it gets very it's dark. It's not her. She's not, this isn't her YA. And mm-hmm. she's allowed to write adult. I mean, we're adults here. You right. Know? But it is um, it is set in college, too, which I think is kind of cool. I, I always love, love books in, well, like, set during college. Well, because there's not a lot. Mm-hmm. That's why I always, like, people make fun of me by navigate to, like, new adult romances because it's people in college and... You know, we have people read a lot of outside those. of college who just graduated, which mm-hmm. I mean, I wish I could have read those when I was in college. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. What's this next one you have? Because I'm really interested in it because I saw podcasts. Oh, <laughs> fiction podcasts with queer characters. Oh, my God. I love so it. we talked a lot about fiction podcasts. I don't know, a while back where, yeah. you know, um, we were listening to Welcome to and Night Han- Vale. Yeah. And Hannah Lime gave Town. us a bunch of yeah. like, yeah options so yeah, then I love that. this one is a list of eight it says eight sweet funny and thrilling queer fiction podcasts awesome okay let's read the titles here i can't kaleidotrope a queer fanish rom-com oh i love that i like the little heart that's uh-huh. cute in which i i just really want to start listening to more fiction podcasts like most of the ones Same, i listen to are like an audio book through crime or interviews Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, these are so fun because I listened to a sci-fi one oh a year over a year ago. Yes, you and did. I mm-hmm. fell in what love. Was it I have to look it up because it was like each week when the new one came out, I was listening to it on my way home from work, and it like it you were so addicted. Good. Oh, that um, was so good. Another podcast I listened to, a little, another like kind is friends just two friends like talking about like oh, stuff yeah. because they feel like that's what we do at t chats and the, i right. love listening to people just like mm-hmm. chat about random Sometimes stuff i just want to listen to people talk yeah oh, where the h is this um this i'll podcast. keep going the bright sessions Ooh, oh I, was, nice. I really like their logo me too, too. these logos are sick mm-hmm. um so the one that i listened to it was from tour labs so Tour Publishing, Tour.com, oh, Tour. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's called Steal the Stars. Mm. And it's so good because it's got a full cast and it's uh, produced really well, you know, with like sound effects and all this other stuff. Oh, I love and, when they add sound effects. Oh, it's just, it was I didn't realize, so good. I didn't realize how much like sound effects really help a podcast. Mm-hmm. But... The voice actors are amazing. And like I said, it was week to week, me sitting on the edge yeah. of my seat, like, I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. And I was like, tweeting the um creators and stuff yeah like, i need the next one <laughs> it was so good all right uh farm the farm meridian the farm meridian i like that the Ooh. strange case of starship iris i just love all these um icons right? i'm just looking at all of their like and logos. they all sound so good like when are we gonna have the time to listen and read and we do all time. the things <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so excited caravan caravan oh, and it says um Imagine if more of Buffy the Vampire Slayer's human versus demon showdowns actually occurred inside the Helma. <gasps> and yeah. if the chosen one were not a white cheerleader, but an awkward queer Desi guy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm so excited. Kalila Stormfire's Economical Magic Services. Oh, that's cute. Urban Fantasy. Yes. I love it. Moonbase Theta Out. Theta? Theta, theta Out. That- I think you're right. The two princes. Uh, they look so adorable. Oh, I want it's, to it's a collaboration right with the Trevor Project, a family-friendly <gasps> fairy tale rift about Rupert and Amir, princes oh. from warring lands who follow an ancient prophecy into the magical woods. Oh, I love that it's partnered with the Trevor Project. Yes. That's so cool. All right, yep, we're going to have to listen to all those. Mm-hmm. They sound so good. I'm going to go subscribe. See, what I do is I just subscribe to them and mm-hmm. then, like, I'll just pick So one. then it's on your list. Mm-hmm. So when you're like, oh, I don't know what to listen to, you pick you something You pick one, yep. yep. 
All right. What's this next one? <laughs> this is like, it's like a, it's like, we should do this more often. Surprises. It's a little surprises. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like, oh, this is exciting. Because usually one of us knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. Not, neither of us do. <laughs> right. Oh, this is 15 inspirational books to read when you need hope. Oh, it's on Epic Reads. Right. Which I thought just was hope. so <laughs> sweet. Yeah. I really like it. Um, and there are some familiar books on here. I was going to say. Uh, Don't Call Me Crazy by, well, edited by Kelly Jensen. It's yes. an anthology. Yes, I have this. Um, I I bought it for the same reason because I wanted to, like, feel. Yeah. Like, like Lost Alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hope Nation. It's another Ooh. book of, you know, stories. Yeah. Um, Project Semicolon. Oh, yeah. What is that? Um, That's um, for... Struggle with mental, prevention. yeah, and they mm-hmm. some people have that tattooed, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Because you are, it's a, a semicolon signifies that you're not done with the sentence. Oh, okay, I love yep. that. Um, Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson, which I haven't read, but it's one of those books. The cover's a classic cool. That really, really the new cover is really cool, right? Uh, the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Yeah. Now, okay, this one. I, I don't know. Like, hope, I don't know if it gives me hope necessarily as it makes me want to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, maybe that's because we don't, didn't grow up like that. So maybe if you grew up like that, it gives you hope. Yeah, that's true. But it does make me want to fight. It yeah. makes me angry. Yeah, it makes me angry. <laughs> uh, the Poet X by Elizabeth a- a- Acevedo. Acevedo. Have uh, you read that? The, I haven't, not. but the cover is cool. Mm-hmm. It is cool. And it's won so many awards. Yeah. Um, Bloodwater Paint by Joy McCullough. Which I've heard a lot of good things about. Mm-hmm. The Book Thief by Marcus Kuzak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he was also on the list of Best YA Authors, yeah. which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Vincent and Theo, The Van Gogh Brothers by Aww. Deborah Heligman. And I've always had like a fascination with Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. So I really, really want to read this book. Yeah. The 57 Bus. Um, this is in this one's based on a true story Ooh. by Dashka Slater. Internment by Samira Ahmed. I read that one earlier this year, and it's very, very good. I was going to say, you really liked that one. Again, this gives me a lot of the same feelings as The Hate You Give. Like, I don't know if it makes me feel hopeful so much as it makes me angry and want to fight and things. And motivated and want to be like, <laughs> yeah. want to like show up and, yeah. Um, How Dare the Sun Rise, Memoirs of a War Child by Sandra Uringimana. Yeah, and Abigail so. Pesta. I'm so sorry. I butchered yeah. her last name. I just love those last names that are really, like, long and pretty. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could say them. Yes. We um, should probably – we always need to look them up. <laughs> right. Hashtag Not Your Princess, Voices of Native American Women, edited by Lisa – it looks – Charlie Boy. Yeah. And Mary Beth Leatherdale. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. That's Again, another like, one that I just feel makes like, me angry. Yes, but... it makes me angry. It makes me terrified for a future like that, you know? Like, if yeah. this is where we're headed, I'm not hopeful. No. <laughs> but we better go get a bow. <laughs> Figure right. some out. No. Um, and then, how do you say that? The Complete... Persepolis? Yeah. By Margie Satrapi. Yeah. Satrapi. Mm-hmm. So yeah, lots of books. If you lots need of books I haven't heard of, so I'm kind of very interested in like diving into these right. books. Thank you, past me. Yes, thank you, past Elizabeth. <laughs> um, so now we're on to this week's topic. We're gonna do the part two of fifty bookish questions. Yes. Oh, uh, I'm really excited because this is also past Elizabeth filling this out. So <laughs> right, <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting to see what we put. <laughs> it's all surprises. <laughs> this whole episode is just surprises. <laughs> all right, so we're on question seventeen. What is your favorite book that contains an LGBTQIA plus character? So I put Vanity and Dust by Cheryl Lowe. Um, and I've never read this. So right. I've talked about this series a lot. I really love it. It's another one of those that like everything um, is kind of like pretty on the outside and then like oh. dark and like you don't realize the evil that's happening. <laughs> I feel like people are going to think that too. <laughs> nice on the inside, but <laughs> you don't know the dark and evil that's True. happening on the <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the main characters in this book is very fluid in his sexuality. I don't mm. even want to say that he's bisexual because it just kind of because he doesn't like, define himself in it. Yeah, he just it just seems like he loves anyone and everyone. He's just attracted to attracted people, attracted to attractive people. Yeah, who people he deems attractive. Right. That's none, yeah. So yeah, that's I love it. 
Ooh. Well, I picked Children Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things series by Martina Mac- McAtee. <laughs> McAtee. Um, and we've both read the series. Mm-hmm. We love it. Um, so we've got... Yep. I'm blinking. <laughs> this is also Samantha Reese? from a while ago. Reese and who, though? I always remember Reese's name because uh-huh. I like the name Reese. Right. Um, oh, no. What's his name? Tristan is his sister. Yes. <laughs> Here, I'm going to the website. I am terrible. And this is like one of our favorite books. <laughs> we need to reread it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is loading. <laughs> it is a loading. But it's Reese. He's a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Wolf. Do they just call them wolves? They just call them wolves. They don't, call, they don't say werewolves. Wolf pack, yeah. Wolf pack. So it's him and it is Kai. Yes, Kai. Kai and Reese. Mm-hmm. And they're like so amazing. They're so adorable. I love them together. This might be spoilers. But my favorite thing is like towards <laughs> one of anyway. <laughs> towards one of the last books that I read on this, and I can't remember uh-huh. how far I've gotten. But anyways, mm-hmm. this is very cryptic. Um, but when they have the little wolf puppy, <gasps> yes, that's like my favorite thing. Right, they're I just so love adorable, them so much. <laughs> they're amazing. Mm-hmm. All right, question eighteen. Yes. Have you read a book with a male protagonist, and what is it? So. I think we've both read both of these, but yep. <laughs> um, I picked Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan. Yes. Um, yeah, this is the book series that Weston is super into right now. Um, and I really liked this male protagonist. Mm-hmm. I really like, I really want to read them again now that he's reading them mm-hmm. just because I, know. I, I just. Well, and I feel bad because he keeps bringing stuff up like, which is your, what was your favorite character and what was your favorite this and that? And I was like, oh, I read it three years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I love, but he comes up to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I agree because I love, like, this was one of the series I read multiple times and I was mm-hmm. like so into it. Because I'm a little, <laughs> how old is he? <laughs> Nine. I'm a nine year old. <laughs> um, yes, I love that series. I love that there's a whole other series mm-hmm. of heroes where, like, and there's just so many worlds that he's gonna. Yeah, and I just feel like he remembers so much. Mm-hmm. He when he likes something, he gets really yes. into it. So I, it's gonna be really interesting because I don't really remember a lot past the Percy Jackson's ones, like the details. I remember mm-hmm. like the main fights and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh gosh, I'm probably going to have to read them. <laughs> um, but and then I picked The Maze Runner by James Dashner. Have you finished it? I think so. I thought it's so. been a while because I yeah. feel like I read that it was a long around time the same time, but after Percy Jackson. Yes. So I've loved this. Um, I think these two are the first male protagonists I've ever read. Sorry. All of a sudden I couldn't hear out of this side. And Weird. That might be just my ears. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I'm on your battery. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, that's why sudden, you're like, quiet. Quiet. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's quiet in my head. Just did it again. <laughs> is it your cord? Is your cord loose? Maybe. Is your is your head loose? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I really liked Mazer. I like the premise of it. I mm-hmm. like um dystopian, yeah, apocalyptic things. So that was a really good book. That one went a lot of places too. It did. It <laughs> did go a lot of places. I really liked the first book. I cried my eyes out because of something in the book. So <laughs> I'm not going to say what because I'll be a spoiler. I think I finished them, but I don't know. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, I, I can't remember. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Uh, question 19. Have you ever, have you ever, I love that I just add words to a sentence. Have you read a book set on another planet. What is it? So yours, or yours, mine, is Empress of a Thousand Skies by Rhonda Bel- Beliza. Mm-hmm. That's how I say it. Um, I, re- I really liked it. It was about a girl who had was supposed to be, like, the crown princess, and everyone thought she died because someone tried to kill her. And so now she's in hiding, and she's trying to figure out who's trying to kill her, and mm. it's so good. Yeah. It was so good. What was yours? Um, so I picked Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, mm. and this book is up for Goodreads Choice Awards for a middle grade <gasps> nice. uh, section, yeah. whatever, whatever I want to say. Um, but so this is about a girl who is a, she has like a fox spirit, and so she can shapeshift. Yeah. And it's so good. She like steals away on this um, ship, and in one part she pretends to be a ghost, and like, she, yeah. it's just so good. And it doesn't, to me, it doesn't read as a middle grade. Oh, yes, that's the one you were saying. It's classified that. as middle grade, but I just don't think that it sa- – it doesn't feel like a middle grade to me. It just felt so detailed. Yeah. And I don't know. I just – I really enjoyed it. And I've heard that um, people really, really enjoy his books, so now I need to go read all the other ones. Yeah. 
Um, one of my, I don't know why this reminded me of it, but Valerian, the, it's a book, but it's also a movie Mm -hmm. that came out. I absolutely loved it. And I know a lot of people didn't, but maybe the storyline could have been better. But like what I liked about it was the detail in like the, the planets Mm -hmm. and the species. Have you seen it? No, but it sounds, oh, I love space movies. But they go to different planets and like all the different planets and they have different species that do different (sighs) things. And it's, it's so, it's, and the colors are beautiful and it, the I don't know I really liked it so that's what it reminded me of. I, I was like, find that you do, <laughs> you do need to find that. <laughs> okay, question twenty. Have you ever been glad not to finish a series, and which is it? And I love that we picked the same thing, we, and I feel so bad. Me too. <laughs> it plugged my. What's up with us in audio today? Um, but so we picked the Wear Girl series by C.D. Bell. It started out so well. It did. We loved, I loved the first loved where book. It started, but it went. I just feel like it went off the rails completely yeah and like all the things from the first book that were very important weren't important anymore by book three yeah and like characters would just like not be talked about ever again they're just gone and or people that really cared about her were just gone and she was okay with it mm-hmm. and there was no like emotional range and yeah. it was very confusing why they wouldn't matter to her anymore like you don't just change like that mm-hmm. it was like a different person yeah it was like if the books had been three separate books with, like, three separate set of yes. characters, maybe? Well, that's, like, okay, there was another series. Remember that series I read over um, um, at yeah. BookCon? Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> right. Where, like, all of a sudden the girl, like, girl's family got burned up in a hospital, but then the next day she's on a road trip with a boy and worrying about if he likes her. And I'm like, but who cares? <laughs> right. Your, your family. It's like, you're, the, it, I don't know, it's like the author's trying to do too many things. Mm-hmm. And it's not working. Yeah. Like, if you want to write that story, then fine. End it at the first book and then start a new one with a different character. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, finish the series out with the storyline that you started with. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, <sighs> that's that. <laughs> um, 21. Have you ever read a book series because you were pressured? <laughs> okay. What's your answer? Mine is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And oh, I loved the pressure. Who pressured you to read you. that? <laughs> I really liked it, though. I'm glad you pressured me, but I got a lot of pressure. Because <laughs> I'm like better. I with the Grisha trilogy. Yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm <laughs> Which like, you've also met her. Yes. <laughs> and it's like after I meet them, I'm like, I'm glad I kind of do because then I don't freak out. And then now uh-huh. I'm like, I met Lainey right I'm at, like I am I'm not that's as, how you're gonna be about Lee Bardugo I know once you I read am. the books I'm definitely you're gonna you're gonna understand why I ran up and hugged this woman and I'm not a hugger yeah <laughs> like who am I, I? Like, and then I never got a picture with her because I freaking spaced I think you did I think the phone gnomes deleted it the phone gnomes <laughs> <laughs> um what's your answer I said all of them on bookstagram huh <laughs> that is very true that's, seriously like that's how my book addiction started because yeah. I used to just like Books, what like if I I bought a book secondhand usually, and it was if I thought it sounded good. Yeah, and like read the back of it. I have a ridiculous amount of books, and it's all because they're pretty mostly. Yes. Mine's because I see them in yours or someone else's bookstagram, or I get like a newsletter about it, or they have pre-order swag, and I'm uh-huh. like, yep, this sounds pretty cool. And they're also going to give me a gift, and I'm going to be able to like. Get a signed cop. Yes. Right. Down. Well, and I love how, like, Bookstagram really hypes you up because, you know, they send, like, people get arcs. Mm-hmm. So you see these beautiful arcs and you're like, oh, I want to read the book so bad. I'm so jealous I got to read it first. And then you pre-order and then you get it and then you never read it. Yep. So thank you, Bookstagram. And then <laughs> repeat. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Uh, question 22. What famous author have you not read any books by? So I used to have, I did have your author, but I also picked this author because this is a also true right um so i picked stephen king which mm-hmm. i'm uh, i like i'm almost embarrassed to yeah. say that i mean he's got yeah. so many books mm-hmm. so many and i've read not one what is wrong with me but to be fair his books are really long usually yes <laughs> can you shorten them can you make a shorter version <laughs> i need a sparks note version please <laughs> I, yeah i agree i definitely want to read some of his books i haven't either um I've watched movies based on his books that I adore, like so, The Shining. Yes, The Shining. I um, love The Dreamcatcher. So it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Carrie. So, Carrie. No, yeah. Is that Carrie? I think Carrie. Yes, said. you're right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm the same with him, but I pick Sarah J. Ma- Moss. Mm-hmm. I've never read any of her books. Which, do you remember our very first book con, sitting in line, and we're like sitting next to these girls, and we're like, oh, like what authors are you here to see? And both of them were like, Sarah J. Moss. Like, we were dumb. And I was like, oh. And we were both kind of like, we've never read her stuff. No. Now I have. 
but you just still don't get the ah <laughs> no i don't I no mean, i've read i've actually talked to a lot of people who have started her books and haven't liked them but i've also talked to a lot of people who read her books and freaking loved them right which so, I, I did i just kind of lost the romance of it i don't know yeah um I i've heard know. yeah people who didn't enjoy court of thorns and roses as much um really like the throne of glass series okay by her. yeah so maybe that's better for so me, I, I don't know I don't anything know. about any of them <laughs> which right. is probably not good but um <laughs> a court of thorns and roses the first book is a dollar on amazon so i bought it Woo-hoo. and it's a beauty and the beast retelling just to so. try it out but i also don't, like i don't i don't know if it's just because when <laughs> i'm such a like i'm such a what's it called hipster because i'm like oh that's really popular i don't want to read it oh god i do that sometimes if it's just overly hyped i don't want to get my hopes up and read it Mm -hmm. and be disappointed which so i kind of let the craziness die down and then i go in and have my own opinion on it yeah which i did really like the i don't know that's another series i would like to try again because well you also be in the right frame of mind sometimes right and it was hard because i had read book one and two back to back and then book three came out a few months later and i started and was just like not into the story anymore yeah so that could be why um because be. i really liked i like the idea of it because it's in it's set in like fey you know mm-hmm. fairy land and this or is whatever. a court of thorns and roses yeah okay and there's like the night court and the day court and the dawn court Ooh. and then there's like autumn and spring yeah. and, fa- and i love that yeah i love all of that but I don't know. I just want to read it again now. Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> You're like, wait a second. I'm regretting everything. <laughs> uh, all right. Question 23. Who is your favorite author of all time? We both put two people. That's not answering the question. <laughs> right. Who'd you put? So I put Lainey Taylor and Lee Bardugo. I feel like that comes as no surprise to anybody. Right. I just feel like, guys, you already know this. Mine and then, is. Well, and then I feel like I'm slowly, not slowly, adding Elise Kova to that because yeah. I can't stop reading her stuff yeah. either. So. So mine is Cassandra Clare and Siobhan Davis. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> um, Siobhan did write a bully romance. Oh. Now I know I don't like bully romances. I just, I'm not a very, did like. Did you read it? I, and it's, it's a good storyline and I was very addicted to it, but it's just like, so, like people being so mean to each other. Mm-hmm. I'm just not a mean person. And so it was kind of hurting my heart a little bit. Right. I was like, why well, gotta be so mean? Yeah. Dang, I feel like it's coming at me. I, I, yeah. And I feel They're like. They're very in though. Bully I, romances are everywhere. I feel like. Like that kind of reaction to it is a similar to when you read the reverse harem because it's yes. a situation that you can't put yourself in. Mm-hmm. So, but you a don't lot relate. Yeah. Uh-huh. But that doesn't make it not a good story. Exactly. Well, and a lot of people really like the drama mm-hmm. of the of the bully romances, and that's why they're going to them is because they want the drama, they want the angst, they want the fighting. It's just too much fighting for me. Uh, right. I don't like that. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> so, um. I, I, which stinks because it was it was such a good like premise because it's mm-hmm. at like this elite high school and they're like Ooh. there's two like families and they like don't get along like Romeo and Juliet kind of, yeah but the but only Romeo and Juliet hated each other oh. you know what I mean yeah. so they like they like each other but they hate each other because of rumors and I don't know but it was just like y'all are so mean and there was like some some physical violence and I also oh. don't like physical mm-hmm. like fighting and yeah. like I'm not a physically violent person right so I. It was just too much. But I really like the idea. Could you write a non? <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I really like, um, oh, what is the trope? Like, <sighs> enemies to lovers. Oh, yeah. And I love that, too. That is not that. Really? It's okay. enemies to lovers to enemies. Oh. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. like that. I also don't like war books. I don't like violence. Mm-hmm. I guess there can be, like, like sword fights or whatever. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You can do yeah. it without tasteful. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. All right. How many bookshelves do you own? <laughs> I love your answer. This is awesome. So I put nine, including the ones in my children's bedroom, which is not enough. I have books stacked in our spare bedroom. Yes. I think it's three stacks deep, and then it goes up to where the window, because mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> I can't have the people outside <laughs> so you like, see this. So you're hoard <laughs> books. Um, I have three. Um, one is a long old library bookcase oh, that I, I love, love that so much. But I also have boxes and stacks of books everywhere. <laughs> and now um, I've started a bookcase at my boyfriend's house of all the new books that I've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I also actually have a bookcase at work. Of all the books people have lent me oh, that I need really? to read. See, I thought about because I have an so extra So I feel pressure shelf. there. I think you should definitely do it because, one, it's really cool. But also, you can have pressure at yeah. work as well. Well, I have an extra <laughs> shelf at work. And I thought about bringing you in should. books that, like, 
I want to offer other people oh, to be able to borrow. I think you should do that. But then I have to go through my books and decide which ones I'm okay with getting beat up and like maybe None never getting back. None of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> who, yeah, who said something like that? Oh, Jackie grabbed one of my books and was open. She's like, I'm being careful. And I was like, am Not I like careful am I, am I? Do I come off like I'm a little <laughs> crazy about my books? <laughs> um, all right. How many books do you own? Uh, question 25. Elizabeth, how many books do you own? So, according to Goodreads, it's 724, which might have changed since I wrote this. <laughs> right. Same. But also, I know I don't have them all logged. Mm-hmm. So. so, my Goodreads says 552, but I put same. I haven't had them all logged. And Kindle books. Oh, no. Didn't even think of how many Kindle books I own. Right. Yeah, as far as my bookshelves, I'm like, I've, for a while, I was really good about scanning mm-hmm. every new book I got same. and putting it on my, like, I don't remember what I called it, on the bookshelf. Yeah. Um, but I don't do that as much anymore. Like, sometimes I'll come across good books on Goodreads. I'm like, I know I own that, but I don't even have it as marked as want to read. Yeah. So, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, same. And I used to be good at, like, okay, I'm going to organize my book. I'm going to go through them and sc- – no. It just takes so much time. Mm-hmm. I need, like, a week to yeah. – set up a library yes <laughs> that's what okay this is this is my dream i want one of those like shed like mini house things have you seen those like they're always sitting outside like hardware oh. stores or whatever yeah. like like a shed it's basically a shed but i want one of those and i just want to fill it with my books like i just want bookcases but you called it a library but you're not gonna let people in there are you no, okay good library. <laughs> a library for myself <laughs> for me and maybe my kids but oh. they still have to no be very careful with the books <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, children. <laughs> We're so nice. Uh, what is your favorite nonfiction book? Ooh, so this took me some time, but you helped me a little yeah. bit. Uh, the Art of Rick and Morty, you got me that for Christmas. <laughs> I freaking love it. It's one of, like, I, I read a lot of it because it says, mm-hmm. like, characters and how they got from, like, where they are, like, where the, how the beginning to where they got now. Like, little things you wouldn't know right, about the like show. Very nerdy things. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of, I have in my calendar, and I think I put it in your calendar as well. <laughs> this month. Our shared calendar, I put Rick and Morty is back on the 19th. Yes. I'm so excited. I know. Me too. I can't wait. <laughs> what is yours? Um, so mine is a book that you got me. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Labyrinth, the ultimate visual history behind the scenes. So like this, is, this book is so cool because it has so many like, what do you call that? Like ephemera. Is that how you say that? Where like there's like a little, there's a piece of paper that flips up and you oh, have to mm-hmm. like look underneath it. Yeah. Or like it's a whole thing that, whoops, that like folds out. Yeah. And like, oh, I just love those kind of things. Yeah. I remember fi- seeing that book and I was like, I had your husband go look in all your book sh- cases <laughs> and he was sending me pictures. Is this it? She has, I'm pretty sure she has. I'm like, I'm just, I'm pretty sure she doesn't have it. And so we were like looking through your stuff. And I was like, well, I'm getting it for her. So. <laughs> I'm in love. Because that's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Like, Did you watch The Dark Crystal, the new one? No. I, I didn't. I think I've seen the old one, but like a long time We've ago. We definitely watched the old one because I, wa- I saw like parts of it. And I was like, yeah, Elizabeth is definitely forced but me to for watch But for some this. reason, I wasn't as into that one. Probably because it didn't have David Bowie. That's exactly saying. why. <laughs> um, but we still watched it because I've seen it. And there's no really? way I've watched it by my myself I was like yep i'm gonna watch this <laughs> i just love the muppets you have you've always had, had a thing for muppets and i've never had a thing for Muppets. which did i tell you my big exciting muppet thing oh, did no, i already what? talk about it on the podcast i was so excited animal from the muppets started following me on instagram you did not tell us that and also <laughs> oh my goodness oh, and no one as is is it is as excited about it as i am like i is keep it telling, verified it doesn't say it's verified but it's animal Oh, they're, they're like it says like animal from Sesame Street. Oh my god, that's so no cool. from the Muppets. Muppets, not whatever. From Sesame Street. How know. dare you? I don't like puppets. Well, so puppets then, freak me out. So I got really excited and I screenshot that he followed me. I put it on my story and then he went through and liked a bunch of my pictures. Oh, <laughs> that's so like, cute. Oh, animal. So this is one thing that we don't agree on because I do not like puppets. Puppets freak me out. My mom's <laughs> favorite comedian has a puppet, and I was she's like, you don't think he's funny? I was like, I don't like that puppet. I don't like it. <laughs> Apparently, I'm one of those people who will just fight a puppet. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't know. I've always loved Jim Henson. Like yes. Jim Henson is a freaking genius. But you used to you you love the Muppets. I mm-hmm. I hate them. Oh, no offense, guys. The Muppets Take Manhattan, one of my favorite movies. You, I know because you made me watch it, and I was like, I hate puppets. I love it. And what's kind of sad is I I like okay, no, I no. haven't pushed this on my children enough, and they don't know who a lot of the Muppets are, and it makes me sad. Good, they're like, probably what, like me because I was freaking out. The animal followed me, yeah. and so I was like showing Raylan, and I was like, here he is. Like showed some videos and stuff, and he was just like, what 
aces. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, okay, so is it your turn or mine? Yours. Okay, thank you. I 27. <laughs> what is your favorite children slash middle grade book? And I was going to ask you, is this because you've read it or what was your, like, reasoning for picking this? So I picked uh, The Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony DeTrilizzi and mm-hmm. Holly Black. Yeah. Um, this was the first book series that me and the kids read together. Oh, okay. And so it kind of has like that special little yeah. place. Um, like we still kind of talk about it. I think it really scared them. So we had to stop reading it for a while, <laughs> <laughs> which is weird because it's not scary, but it's about like different creatures that live amongst us basically. Mm-hmm. And like one of the creatures like lives in their house, in their walls. And so I think it kind of freaked them out because they're a little <laughs> bit young when we started it. But, but now they play Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't understand what scares them. Yeah. So what's yours? Okay. So mine's <laughs> Rocket's World series by Lauren Day. This is one of the series is, I don't know if you remember it. I want you to click on it and look. Yeah. Do you it remember sounds it? sounds familiar. I loved it. Oh, I want you to see it. Do you remember? Yeah. It was Rocket's World. Okay. And so, like, they had, like, a game. But she was, like, basically, like, it helped you with, like, middle school. Like, who can you trust? What kind of friend are you? I never read it, but I remember, like, seeing that. Yeah. And it was just, like, basically, like, situations oh. that happen. Like, um, yeah, dives in. Like, she's, like, funny. out. She's a funny eighth grader, junior high. I don't know. It just, I really liked it. Oh, that's adorable. And I remember her computer game. You could, like, you were at Rocket Summer Camp, and you could, like, make friendship bracelets. Oh, my and goodness. That, that sounds like your kind of video I game. Know. <laughs> like that one where you said you're always making flower crafts. Yep. <laughs> I love oh. doing that. Everyone's like, okay, it's a survival game. Everyone go out and gather stuff. And I just gather a bunch of flowers and make a bunch of flower crowns. Oh, my God. And did I tell you in that it actually helps you? In what? the game, but I had no idea because I was literally like, I just want to make flower crowns. Yeah. This is what I'm good at. I am the flower crown maker. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? Uh, next is, what is your what is next on your TBR? Ooh. I put, ah, uh, so many. <laughs> um, right. I'm thinking Consumed by G.R. Ward and Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver because I have five days until they get given back. Oh, yeah, because it's audiobooks, right? And, yes, and then two people have them, so I can't. Oh, shoot. Then you're just going to have to put them on hold again if you don't get to them. Oh, my God, I'm turning into you, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you said we would do this, and I didn't believe you. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it happened. It what happened. about you? What's on? What's next on your TBR? So I have Sa- uh, Sovereign Sacrifice by Elise Kova. It's the fourth book yes. in Vortex Chronicles. And the fifth one comes out? January. January. And it's Crap, I forgot. <laughs> that's like, that's kind of cool that you get to read the fifth and final one after reading these four. Yeah, thank God, because I need, like, she doesn't do, like, crazy cliffhangers, but it's enough to where it's like, well, obviously, I need the next book right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Okay, definitely. so the fifth one is Crystal Caged, Ooh. and that's supposed to be out sometime in January. And she doesn't have the cover revealed yet, so. Ugh. You're going to have to post that on your story when yes, she does. because I love her covers Yeah, so same. Okay. All right. We already talked about this, but. Um, what are you currently reading? Yep. So, yeah, we did already cover this. Do you want to say it again? You can say it again. Okay. Yeah, of so, obviously, Failed Future by Elise Kova. And Suicide Notes <laughs> from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Weingarten. Yay. Uh, what book are you planning on buying next? So, both of ours are pre-orders. <laughs> um, I had a couple, but I wanted to pick this one because I think you would be really interested in it. It's called, and it, you can still order it. Scared Little Rabbits by A.V. Geiger. Ooh. The cover's pretty interesting. I really like it. Um, oh, I think I've seen this. Okay. Yeah, right? Uh, Nora mm. accepts her dream summer program at Prestigious Academy. She jumps the chance. Her coding skills won. It's a computer coding, so mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. Um, then Phil and students goes missing, and the tech trail for the crime leads back to Nora. Oh, no. With no one else to trust, Nora must race to uncover the truth and clear her name, or she might be the next to disappear. Yikes. Love it. It has computers. Nerd girls. Love it. Yes. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> and I think they have, like, pre-order swag with an animal pen. Sweet. What about you? Um, so I have this on here, but I already have this book, so I'm sorry. Wow. But it was the pre-order of The Never Tilting World by Rin Chupeco. That Ooh. one just came out within the last two weeks i yeah. think um so obviously you can still order it but i love her books she's also the author of the bone witch yeah mm-hmm. so i just bought all three of those thanks elizabeth <laughs> so she's one of my uh auto buy authors yeah. now so yeah i saw she had to do one coming out and it's about twins so Ooh, yes, that's please. one of your tropes and i think it's a uh, sci-fi that right? a yeah trope? okay yeah. remember we were gonna come up with a name for it oh yeah we do need to yeah. because yeah um 
question. We should really reach out because I want to know why the first book isn't hardcover anymore. I need that to bring that so over and strange. show you. Show you the one I got. Like, the yeah. wax is peeling. Oh. But I'm still, I still love it. It's I wonder if they're going to be changing. I don't know. It's just so I strange. hope not because I freaking love those mm-hmm. covers. Like, that's one of the reasons when I they're saw it on your shelf, I was like, I need this. And then I saw it was gone and I got worried that all of them were going to be gone. <laughs> so I just <laughs> rage panic. bought all of them. <laughs> panic. 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 Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's how book out like gets me every time and i panic by because it it's like there's only 15 left i'm like god yep. mm-hmm. why'd you have to say exactly that? Uh, 31 what is the cheapest book you bought <laughs> so i put lots of books from the secondhand store because yeah. we get them for 50 cents when mm-hmm. we're you know back in grinnell and going yeah. to all the different secondhand stores one of them books are 50 cents yes and we've found some pretty great ones there mm-hmm. before definitely so. So, yeah, I put ditto because, like, really. I mean, and even the most expensive started. ones that we get from secondhand are, like, $2. Yeah, I honestly think that's insane. I and a lot I, of times we find ARCs, which is yeah. kind of cool. And I also think I've bought in a box set for, like, five bucks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just definitely look at your secondhand bookstores because. Mm-hmm. There's treasures. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> some people, like, I always love, like, I don't know how they do it, but I always love when a local YA nerd gets rid of their books. Because I'm like, one, how could you have done that? But also, thank you. <laughs> right. Because I'm going to be taking all of them. Yeah. Because we just saw recently all the PS I Love You books. Mm-hmm. So I sent a picture to Hannah, and Hannah's like, I'm going to buy them. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. All three of them in nice condition. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so nice. And then what is the most expensive book that you've bought? Yeah. <laughs> we kind of had the same answer. What's yours? Um, so I said special edition books. Um, I have both the Illustrated Hobbit. And then I recently bought – well, I had Six of Crows. And then I bought oh, – what is the second book in that series called? Crooked Kingdom. Mm-hmm. They're special editions of those with like – Are they the are they the UK editions? They, I think they are. Okay, that's what I thought. They're like foil covers. Yes. And like they don't have the dust jacket. It's just like mm-hmm. the – like fabric-y feeling cover they're so pretty yeah i had to have them <laughs> <laughs> so mine was um the city of bones 10th anniversary it has like a hard cover with like gold emboss on oh, the cover yeah. and then it has gold edge pages oh sparkly my gold. goodness and it's signed Holy so crap. i did spend a little money on that right but i wanted it and i literally it's never been opened i don't want to crack the spine it's just right? it's, it's just pretty you are pretty <laughs> speaking of cracking the spine did i ever tell you this story when i was first like like really big into the book world and like mm-hmm. reading and like wanted my books to be pretty. I was reading a paperback and like you know how you, paperbacks. <laughs> oh no, I already know where you're going. With this. <laughs> you, you don't want the spine to crack, so you hold it just right so it doesn't. Yeah. And I'm doing this, and I don't remember what we were doing, what co- the conversation was, or whatever. But Alex took the book <gasps> from me and cracked the spine, and I was like, "Why did you do it?" Like, I acted like I was dying. And he's like, what is the big deal? I'm like, what would you, you put a line in the spine. Like, <laughs> you monster. <laughs> and that's why she only gets hard covers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and he's never lived it down. I don't let him touch my books anymore. <laughs> I do hate that. Like, I love, like, I always am the one who, like, pull like when i'm reading and i'm really into a book i'll notice that with paperbacks i'll fold it behind Mm -hmm. and i think that's sometimes you can tell the books that i've loved a lot and read a lot like my perks is like destroyed but then i bought the 20th anniversary and it's gonna sit nicely on the shelf Mm -hmm. well that's the thing is like i go between loving books that are like pretty and i can take pictures of because they are pristine yes and then i really love books that have been loved Mm -hmm. that you can tell like someone loved that book and they read it so many times because it looks loved yeah i have a question so this is random but it's about paperbacks and folding Mm -hmm. um on bookstagram i've like when i've gone to write a book and the page won't how do you what do you do when that happens or does that happen a lot like when you go to like take a picture of a paperback and the cover is like coming up do you ever come across that? Yeah, I do a lot of like trying to fold, fold the book. it. Okay. Yeah, because I was wondering because I had I found an art. Better I do something where like something drapes sort of On over it, it yeah. and kind of folds the okay. cover down. I try and be creative mm-hmm. with because I've been finding a lot of arcs recently mm-hmm. at used bookstores, and a lot of them are coming up, and I'm like, oh, I want to take a that picture or of you. I really like to like fold back the first couple pages just so it's the title page, <gasps> and then and, like, take a picture. Yeah, that's, just the title that's page. Smart. I like yeah. that. Cool. Thanks for the advice. I'm going to have to do that, all of that. Because when I, one I did, I held the book and, like, took a picture of, like, the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, what else can I do? Because I'm finding all these, but they are loved. Right. <laughs> Which is nice to see. It is nice. But sometimes it's hard to photograph. photograph. Yeah. yeah. So is Kindle books. I love getting them, but they are hard to photograph. Mm-hmm. Kurt didn't understand. I took, like, 20 pictures. Like, they all look nice. I'm like, no, you can see my reflection. And it's not nice. Mm-hmm. Well, some of them, too, if you can get the picture, like... 
straight on. Um, I'll just uh, Photoshop yeah. the cover in because it's so hard to get a picture without a glare. Yeah. And if you can get it Photoshopped in so it doesn't look Photoshopped, then yeah. you're good. <laughs> you should see mine. Um, I'll be like, I'll lean completely over it so there's no glare because mm-hmm. I'm the shadow. Right. And I probably look like a weirdo <laughs> taking these pictures because I'm like <laughs> leaning over it and like holding the camera down by my boobs. <laughs> just trying to get a good shot. Yeah. Well, I would love to see like, I'm surprised Alex hasn't taken pictures oh, of you God. while you're doing stuff because we look so weird doing it well i was out in my my front yard a few weeks ago doing that and Mm -hmm. people were driving by and i was like oh my god this is so embarrassing yeah keep driving people (laughs) i'm busy (laughs) nothing to see here (laughs) all right well i think that does it for the questions part 50 questions part two yeah um we still have a part three we have a part three coming (laughs) we're kind of spacing them out so you guys aren't just overwhelmed with all of the questions Mm -hmm. um but we'll be posting these um questions uh, on Patreon and in our Facebook group mm-hmm. just to see what everyone else's answers are because yes. I really like hearing other everybody's answers mm-hmm. and getting it's to so know fun. everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get going. We've got more tea to drink and books to read. Our social medias are all down below. Go follow us um, yeah. and see all the pretty pictures we're posting and all I'll of the doodles. All of the I doodles. I love the doodles. <laughs> my favorite. Uh, and Elizabeth's always very dedicated <laughs> I try books to I, don't know, I'm, I like them every day I'm like oh Elizabeth posting today it is nine <laughs> yeah I don't have my second one up yet today so whoa I'm just kidding soon, <laughs> soon. I've gotten one up in the past two weeks <laughs> you're amazing <laughs> uh, make sure to rate and review the podcast on yes, Apple Podcasts please. it does really help people find us and find more book nerds for our community yeah uh, come get personals with us on Patreon. We have two Patreons whoop, whoop. now. So thank exciting. Thank you, Nicole and Christy. You guys are amazing. <laughs> and thank you for participating in our Patreon and hopefully coming on Discord. I think we've got it set it up correctly. Right. If we um, don't, please message us because, I mean, I, I know I'm IT for a living, up. but I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> uh, right. And that's the thing. We're not on the other side, so we don't know what you guys see. Exactly. So, so. if you didn't get an invite or, like, Whatever, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> um, well, yeah, thanks for listening, and we'll see you all guys next week. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>